Hello my soccer universe, to review a really interesting round in the Austrian Bundesliga we had only wins and not only that, both Vienna teams won, both Linz teams won and also both Graz teams won. Well for Sturmgraz is not a surprise but GRK, that was a major surprise, they got the first win of the season so I found this the most interesting fact of this round of course. Wearing a pink Lask jersey because Lask played in pink. I don't want to warm up the topic again. I decided to always wear a jersey that approximates what Lask is wearing in their games. All I'm saying about the pink jersey, hey love it or hate it, Lask have won both of their games this season when they were playing in pink. That's all I'm saying although I think in both cases it was not necessary because in the reverse fixture at home could play in the home jerseys when the opposition played in the exact same jerseys. But let's leave that one aside. The highlight of Saturday's results was of course that GRK finally get a win. It took them 13 rounds to finally beat an opponent. It's a 2-1 win over VSG Tirol. Modern in the ninth minute already pulling them on the winning path. However, Anselm equalizes just after the half and you thought Tirol might actually turn this one around and then it's an own goal by Lawrence in the 76th minute. It gives GRK finally the first win. Meanwhile, Sturm Graz proved to be too good for Hartberg, taking already a lead in the 10th minute through Chukwani. Hartberg trying to stay in the game, however, Sturm Graz creating many more chances. And Yardimchi in the 56th minute again gets a goal, gives Sturm Graz a 2 0 lead, and it's only laid on that Maxi Hoffman can pull one back for Hartberg. In what was potentially the most interesting duel of the round, Wolfsburg against Austrivena. Austrivena get a 1-0 away win. Keep up their really good streak. They maintain their third place. For a day they were even second ahead of the city rivals. And Wolfsburg may have had multiple chances. It is Maurice Malone that give Austrivena the win after a Fitz cross laid on. Jukic hit only the post for Wolfsburg, but they cannot find an equalizer. Boy, this win for Lask was not for the faint-hearted. It needed a 90th and 94th minute turnaround by Maxi Entum to finally break through. They got the goals. They really got the goals that they didn't get in previous times. Maybe if you look over the stats and the chances, maybe it was a deserved win. However, when Altach early on in the second half got the go-ahead goal after a Fadinger shot that then Estrada with his back heel deflects into the net after Siebenhantl absolutely botched a clearance with his fist. You thought that Altach actually at that point was more in the game and actually would have deserved it. Yes, then slowly Lars ratcheted up the pressure and had two chances through Flecker. Also another great volley by Entrup, who should have scored earlier, this would have been a great goal. But then when he plows through in the 90th minute after a really nice pass by Bojarde through three defenders, rounding him the goal in the internet. Yeah, this looked like the striker that I wanted to have. And then he also converts expertly and in a very nice manner. A nice pass by Ljubicic with all the def uh, defenders concentrate on him. So turn around, Ljubicic could have gotten a third one. That would have been a bit too much. But overall, during the match, this was literally the reporter's curse because I was going through all the headlines that I would use for these games, like complete embarrassment, too slow, the winter break cannot come soon enough, and then it turns all around in stoppage time, more or less. Yes, the first goal was still scored in regulation. But yeah, overall, this means now that the block since the last international break saw two away wins at Western teams that are fighting against relegation, both games you were down. Then you had two home games where late on you could not find an equalizer against Sturm Graz and a winner against Hartberg that probably you should have gotten. You lost a pretty bad one in Ljubljana. And then the game against Zirke Bruges, yeah, could also have been better. You should have shown the punch that you've shown in Altach now. I think the direction is right. I don't want to beat up on the team too much. There's too much happening online for that anyway. I have to say some of the performances have been stale and for large swaths of the games. The players seem a little bit lethargic on the field. And I actually have to look a little bit at our super creative players like for instance Schul who is losing very often balls left and right. On the other side I see also that there's something growing that this team is working and this comeback spirit 
that is something we didn't have really before and that makes me a little bit more positive and with this win you're still in the running for the top six spots you actually made a huge leap there now you need to hang on to that one and maybe during the international break you can fine-tune a little bit more and maybe just before the winter break you can go on a great run i'm just not really expecting it from this team at this very moment The opposite of the round had to be Blauweiss Linz beating Salzburg 2-0. And fully deservedly so. Despite Salzburg having the majority of possession, Blauweiss Linz were a way more dangerous team, creating more chances along the way. This was absolute masterclass by Blauweiss Linz, but we definitely have to say, Red Bull Salzburg have shown what they can show at Feyenoord, but this was way too slow what they were playing here. In the first half it was pass, 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 with no penetration going forward. The only shot on goal didn't even hit the corner flag. That's how how bad it was whether Ronnie Wilder probably should have put Blavis Linz already ahead in the first minute. He does so early in the second half and this was emblematic of how bad Salzburg are at the moment. It's a kickoff and the three on the back are passing the ball around and finally a ball goes straight is intercepted by Ronnie Waldo who puts it in the net in the 46th minute. And then Bridl takes a shot that Schlager cannot see very well in the 58th and it's 2 nil blau Linz. There could have been more. Ronny Waldo almost called out Schlager. This Salzburg team is an absolute enigma and there's so much wrong here that major soul searching has to happen. At least they got the points now in the Champions League for Austria but other than that they are an absolute shambles. And in the final game of the round, Rapid get the expected 2-0 win over Klagenfurt. Burgstall and Schaub combining for both of the goals, both in the first half, even in the first half of the first half. In the 11th minute Schaub to Burgstaller and then in the 23rd Burgstaller to Schaub to give them an easy 2-0 win. It could have been more. Klagenfurt only very late on got a little bit of a surge where they maybe could have gotten something. But this was overall deserved win for Rapid, a Rapid team that seems to be the only real challengers to Sturm Graz, although Sturm Graz are flying relatively high in the table at this very moment. I think it's easy to see that currently there are about three battlegrounds in the Austrian Bundesliga. There's the top. Sturm Graz three points ahead of Rapid but Rapid keep up with them and then behind that is Austria Vienna who I still don't quite trust. They're playing a great season so far. However, how long can they keep that one up or will they really challenge as well for a European spot? I mean it would be great for the league, not necessarily great for this Lask fan here but I think the Austrian Bundesliga is always better when the Vienna teams are doing well. And then of course there's Salzburg which we'll talk about a little bit later. Then we have the big fight into the top six where Salzburg is actually in there. We have at the moment six teams within three points for three spots. Yes, Salzburg have game in hands against Klagenfurt and against Hartberg, who also have, of course, game in hands. This looks wide open at this very moment. And so wins are crucial to get. And then we have the relegation three. This is Tirol, this is Alltag, this is GAK. And that is also getting relatively tight because each of these teams are taking points off each other as well. So a really exciting league overall. We also had quite some goals. We're hitting now slightly above 2.7 per game, which also makes the league quite attractive to watch, I would say. And add to it then the drama around the biggest team in the league, not by fan base, but by money. And you have quite a compelling storyline. Salzburg. What's happening with Salzburg at the moment? This is what everyone's asking themselves. Ever since Christoph Freund left, this team is going downhill. And I don't, it's not only Christoph Freund. I mean, you could also say ever since Dietrich Mateschitz died, the team, there is not this punch behind it. They had a great showing in the Champions League. However, in the league, they play slow. They have not scored now in three games in a row. It seems the team is not working. That new coach Pep Linders has completely upset the internal structure within the team. At the moment, everything is up for grabs in Salzburg. Who might be able to turn this ship around? Because at the moment, this is very much a sinking ship. To the delight, and I have to emphasize it, to the delight of most other Austrian teams because now it seems the title is up for grabs and especially Rapid fans are looking very much at finally breaking that streak and getting another title to Hütteldorf. And this year could be their year, but Sturm Graz are also still very, very, very strong. And this might also be the last hooray for Sturm Graz in the current setup with coach Chris Ilzer 
sporting director. Schicke has already left for Hoffenheim, for instance. As for the next round, we have an international break coming up, as you know, and there's also a lot of stake for the Austrian national team. They have to win the Nations League group in order to qualify for League A for sure, which is well in their reach. Coming back, we have actually quite an interesting round. I mean, the top game by name would definitely be Salzburg against Lusk, but both teams are kind of struggling. It used to be a fixture where I went into with trepidation, but at the moment I actually can see that Lusk could actually get something out of Salzburg as well, which would be great, because this means you gain more points that you might not count on of moving on into the top six. But the big one, honestly, is Austria Vienna against Hartberg. Those are two teams that have been really good as of late and add to it that Hartberg is now coached by former Austria Vienna coach and still a darling of the Austria Vienna fans in Manfred Schmidt. That I think is definitely one to watch for. And then we have the second team derby between Blavis Linz and GRK. Both teams are more or less the second most supported team in their respective cities. Could be an interesting one. So, we're going into an international break. Fortunately, Lusk turned it around. As I said, I really feared the worst and I was ready for this winter break. Now, it actually gives me a lift going into the last three fixtures before the winter break. And there's also three European fixtures in there in late November, December, which kind of seems a little bit too cramped into the cold winter months. But hey, UEFA decided to do it this way. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the Austrian Bundesliga at this very moment. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my Austrian Bundesliga universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!